Hello la da da lovelies and welcome back to my channel. If you saw one of my recent videos, which was a shopping trip vlog for my birthday, you would know that I recently got two new holes put in my ear. So today I thought I would run you guys through what it's like to get a cartilage piercing. I don't particularly have too many piercings. The first ones I got were my lobes when I was 12, then this one up the top when I was 19, then probably about three years ago now I did get a second one put in on this side, but I had to take that one out. I will get into that later. And then most recently, these two up the top here, which are also helix piercings. Basically, I just thought that I would cover everything that you need to know about getting a helix piercing from before to the process during and after care as well. So I guess I'll just get into it. I thought I'd start with a few things that you should probably know beforehand, including that you need to be over 16 in order to get a piercing without parental consent. In my experience, I have not needed to book an appointment, so usually for a lot of places you can just walk in, but you can also call up and potentially book as well. I would also suggest making sure that you're well hydrated and that you've had food beforehand, just in case you're the kind of person that faints with pain. It just kind of makes sense to look after your body when you're going to be impaling it. Oh, look at that. I've been impaled. <laughs> also, if you're scared of the pain, I really wouldn't recommend taking any ibuprofen because obviously this thins out your blood a bit, which only makes it more likely that you will bleed when you get pierced. And same goes for alcohol. That thins your blood as well. There are a few different ways that you can get your ears pierced, including a needle, a gun, or a device such as this, which is what I most recently had done on this ear. I have had it said to me that you shouldn't really use anything but a needle to pierce your ear because it does add a bit of additional trauma which can cause more swelling and makes it hurt a bit more. But personally I've had both guns used and I've had a needle done and it hasn't really made a difference for me. The cost will depend on where you go of course. I most recently went to Levisa and they're doing free piercings at the moment. I use inverted commas because obviously nothing is ever free. You pay for the jewellery and then they will pierce it for free and then they will also give you the aftercare for free. It's a pretty decent deal really. I paid $60 over to get both of them done. I found my experience at La Vida really great. The girls were really accommodating and any questions I had or things that I wanted to tell them about my experiences with piercings in the past, they were very open to hearing and took everything that I said on board, which was great. So far in my experience, places have done this anyway, but do make sure that if you're getting pierced, they are using proper good quality jewelry, such as surgical steel, gold plated jewelry or sterling silver. If you use cheap jewelry, you are more at a risk of infection. So be sure to make sure that wherever you're going to get your ears pierced, is using the correct materials. It is also worth noting that you'll be made to sign a waiver wherever you go so that they won't be liable if anything goes wrong with your piercing. So that's something worth knowing in advance. And also you will need to show your ID to ensure that you are over 16 and don't need consent or obviously a parent there to give consent for you. What I'm going to talk about now is a huge part about why I'm making this video and that is the time that someone pierced a vein in my ear. So my second ever helix piercing did used to be underneath this top one in my ear but I had to take it out as they pierced a vein. I did not know this at first so it was probably about a week before I ended up going back there and being like something is wrong because I kept finding that it was bleeding a lot and it was a lot more painful than my last one. That gets me to an extremely important point which is make sure that the person piercing you checks for veins in your ear. When you're getting your piercing done they will usually get a pen and dot where you're going to get it pierced on your ear. So do make sure that before and after they are doing that they check to make sure that there are not any veins where they will be putting the needle through. When I first had this experience where they pierced my vein something did seem off to me because the first helix piercing that I got done was not as painful as the second one so that was the first sign that something was off. Secondly my first one did not bleed at all during my experience. I never had any blood at any stage throughout. That may not be the same for everyone but the second one bled a lot which is a sign that they have hit a vein. My ears healed up perfectly now so I wouldn't worry too much about it or let that put you off. Obviously I didn't let it put me off. I have two more now. It did take me a while to get back to doing it but honestly that was more so like being lazy and wanting to spend the money than it was actually being worried after my past experience. But yes, please do make sure, very importantly, to communicate with your PSR, tell them any of your concerns. If they don't go to check for the torch for veins, make sure that they do. It's a much better option than it bleeding and bleeding and you having to take it out. <laughs> In case anybody wants to know where I got that piercing done that went badly, it was actually at a place called Cosmetics Plus in Whitford's Shopping Centre here in Perth. And it doesn't exist anymore, so you don't have anything to worry about. No one's going to be getting pierced at a place that doesn't exist. 
Now regarding the pain, I wouldn't really say that you could rate it on a scale of 1 to 10 because obviously everyone has different pain tolerances, right? But personally what I would compare it to is probably just like a sharp pinch using your nails and then it kind of just like fades away in the same way as that does. Before you leave, they will tell you how to clean it as well. Majority of places will either give you a saline spray to use or have it available for purchase so that you can easily clean your new piercing. If not, make sure that you go to a chemist and pick up saline spray. It's cheap. It's pretty much just like salt water, but it's definitely the right thing to use to clean your piercings. I'm going to delve straight into aftercare for you guys now so you know exactly what to do in order to make sure that your piercing does not get infected. That being said, it is very rare that a piercing gets infected. It's pretty much just if you play with it too much and any kind of bacteria gets in there or you're not looking after it properly, which, you know, that's your own fault really then, isn't it? This is the spray that they gave me at Levisa. It's just called an after piercing solution. This is by Studex, which is the same brand that they use to do the little piercing things. That thing, I mean. <laughs> Basically, I just use a little cotton swab twice a day at least and just get in and wipe around the piercing obviously this will hurt a bit more initially when you've first gotten it done but as you go along it's fine and it's just kind of a basic routine that you get into i do recommend leaving this by your bathroom sink so that say after you go to the loo you wash your hands they're nice and clean you can clean your piercing or when you do your teeth is a good time as well because they do recommend that you clean it at least twice a day Another key thing to remember though is that you don't really want to touch or irritate it too much. Basically, the more you leave it alone, other than cleaning, the better. I cannot stress enough, do not touch your piercing without washing your hands first. We know that there is a germy world out there and you do not want those germs getting into a fresh wound. So that's definitely a very important tip to remember. As far as healing time goes, a lot of people will tell you a lot of different things. In my experience, I have heard 12 weeks is basically the standard, which is obviously three months. But if you look it up, you'll hear anything from six months to 12 months or whatever. But really, you can't judge just by looking at it because the piercing will heal from the outside in. So even if it looks like it is okay, it's probably still healing on the inside. So you do need to be careful. I've never had any issues changing earrings when it's come to the three months mark. So personally, I would recommend that. That's fine. But even after that, I would make sure that you're using proper either surgical steel, sterling silver or gold plated jewelry so that if it is still healing at all, it won't get infected. Personally, when I got these ones done around the three day mark I did have quite a bit of swelling and it was hurting a bit so just to kind of counteract that you can take some ibuprofen I didn't have any bleeding from like thinning blood or anything like that from taking it and it definitely helped with the swelling and with the throbbing pain that I was getting a bit also if you want to ice your ear to take the swelling down that's a good idea as well make sure that you wrap it in paper towel though so it's nice and sterile and that you've washed your hands before you do so but I definitely recommend those things if you are finding that it's it's a little bit painful or swollen a few days after you've gotten it done. I'm at roughly the two week mark now and I find that I can like touch it quite a bit and it doesn't really hurt but I'm definitely still not sleeping on it which gets me into my next very important point. You should not be sleeping on your piercing. Whether you've got both lobes done or you've gotten one up the top on one side do not sleep on your side it will affect the way that it heals and also it will hurt which is not great is it? <laughs> I do have a rather reasonable solution for you though if you feel that you cannot sleep without sleeping on your side which your piercing is and that is a travel pillow. This is the first time that I've had a piercing and that I thought of this idea and honestly it has been an absolute godsend. Basically I've just been putting the travel pillow on top of my pillow, my ear goes through the middle and I don't have to worry about being directly on it, it hurting or healing weird or anything like that. It's honestly been the best being able to sleep properly. The first few nights when I hadn't thought of this idea yet, I was having a lot of trouble sleeping because I was tossing and turning and trying to figure out how to get comfortable because I was so used to sleeping on this side. But after thinking of this idea, I have had the best night's sleep and it has been absolutely no issue at all. So definitely recommend if you've gotten a piercing and you can't sleep properly, it's, it's just the best. It fixes everything. Now I feel like this is a question that everyone asks and everyone has heard a lot in relation to piercings and that is do you or don't you twist it? And I think that comes down to the fact that we like to play with our piercings which you should not do when it is healing. However, I'm not gonna lie, I play with this top one all the time and obviously I don't have any issues because it has already healed. So final verdict to this question, no, do not pierce it 
at least within the first two weeks of it healing. You don't want to irritate it, you don't want to get any germs in there, but if you are going to twist it, I would recommend that you make sure it is wet, so you've been using your saline solution, so that it doesn't get too irritated and it's already kind of like lubricated before you're turning it. However, if it comes to fiddling with it in the middle of the day and you have dirty hands, please do not touch it. You are only going to increase your chances of infection, which we do not want. I think that's all that I wanted to cover today guys. If you do decide to get a cartilage piercing, please do make sure to look after it. It does take that extra bit of care than your earlobes. So just remember to keep it clean, don't touch it too much, and you will be right as rain. If you have any further questions for me, I'll be absolutely more than happy to help you out. So just leave a comment down below with any queries that you may have. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful or you enjoyed it, please do not forget to give it a massive thumbs up. It always means a lot to me. And of course, if you are new here, hello and welcome. My name is Angela. If you'd like to join us on a more permanent basis or see more videos from me, you can hit the subscribe button and of course, ding the notification bell to be told when I bring out a new video. So that's all from me. I hope that each and every one of you have an absolutely gorgeous, wonderful, marvelous, spectacular, amazing, warm and safe day. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Love it, I love ya. Mm -hmm.